it's a, it's a movie about sometimes you don't know what's going to make you happy and until you find it. But when you find it, you have to embrace it. And that's the hard part. So Annie and Will, they find it kind of halfway through the movie, but then the, the second half is trying to embrace it and, and let themselves kind of go with the flow. And they ultimately do find each other. And it's a really, it's a great, it's a great message about you don't always know what you want, but if you do find it, grab it. Jamie and, and Quivinjane have, have a great chemistry. I mean, you know, Quivinjane looks at Jamie. Jamie was like her daddy on the set. She was, you know, she's, but she's away from her family. When she's shooting in New York City. She's, their family's back in New Orleans, Louisiana. And Jamie's kind of taking her under uh, his wing. And, and the, the energy when they're together is just is infectious because they laugh, they sing, they dance together. And they really kind of, they get each other. This whole movie was shot on location in New York City. So if they're going to sing, they have to be in, on the street in New York City or in a restaurant in New York City. So instead of choreographing a dance and then sticking it somewhere, we, we took great pains with Zach Woodley, who's the choreographer, to find out where the song's going to take place, why the song is happening, and, and choreograph it in a way that it felt real and organic to the situation. So for, for instance, in Tomorrow, the whole song of Tomorrow takes place when Annie is walking down the street when she just came from family services after having found out that she doesn't know who her parents are. And it's just her walking down the street in Harlem looking into the reflections of all the storefronts and the vans. And what she sees in the storefronts and the vans are family and kids, what she wants to see. But when we turn around and she actually walks, you see that it's not. It's just a figment of her imagination. So she's kind of singing it to herself. So no one else kind of realizes she's singing a song and no one breaks out into song. The only gigantic number we have is at the very end when everyone in the cast and all the, all the extras start singing and dancing because they're at a big opening for something. You'll see the movie why, but it makes sense why they're dancing at the end. There's actually two, there's two villains in the movie, um, but the chief villain is, is Miss Hannigan, played by Cameron Diaz. But again, we, we, instead of having this kind of crazy drunk woman who lives in this foster home, we, we went through great pains to give her a backstory and why she, she used to be a professional singer. She was quite famous. She was fired for certain reasons. She's kind of peaked 20 years ago, and ever since then, she thought she should be famous, and she's not. Now the only way she can make money is by fostering these kids. And um, she's very funny. Uh, she's kind of trapped in the 90s. And unlike the original, we, she really has a journey. So we, we, we realized from the beginning why she got this way. And at the end, when she realizes that she did a bad thing by putting Annie in jeopardy, she writes her own wrong. And she feels bad about it. And she, she has a journey. And she comes back to the other side. So we gave Miss Hannigan a journey, too, that she starts kind of nasty. And she comes around and kind of does the right thing. Uh, the only person that doesn't have that type of journey in the entire movie is Bobby Cannavale's role, who's a new character I wrote. Who, play, who works for Mr. Stax, well, Jamie Foxx's character, as a political consultant, patterned him after James Carville's All the, of the World, the, the kind of, um, the uh, Carl Rove. In fact, his character name used to be Carl, and I changed it to Guy at the last second. And he doesn't have any journey. He's just kind of a, a bad guy from A to Z, and he's the guy that will do anything to get uh, his boss elected. And, and he's, Bobby Cannavale is a great actor, and he plays a great villain because he walks that great line from being very, very funny, but very serious and scary too.